Hey everybody, I don't know about you, I'm ready to have some fun with some displacement textures. And I've been busy making an add-on to do just that. And as you can see, I've got this crazy looking terrain, but don't judge it just yet until you see what it actually is. I'm going to show you how to make this, and then of course you want to make some more subtle adjustments so that it looks a little bit better then you should be able to do that pretty quick and easy and have a really cool terrain based on a texture and the add-on that i made is going to take out probably about 60 70 percent of the actual workflow and make it super easy so let's jump right in all right so for now until i decide to put a few more functions in here you're going to have to set up a couple of things not much um, all you have to do first is make sure that you are in cycles. You can be in um, experimental, but supported works just fine. Make sure you're in GPU compute. All right, then all you have to do is add a plane. And I'm actually going to unsubdivide this. It's a preset. It's a little heavy. And so to keep the scene a little bit lighter, we'll do it that way. And I'll probably add a few more options so that the different subdivision levels can be achieved nice and easy. So I'll come over to the Eevee engine first. And just to kind of show you how this works, I'll go to the shader editor. So you can see there's nothing on here. There is no material yet. So I'll go ahead and add the displacement texture. And it's going to go ahead and add everything that's necessary. And then from here, you can go find whatever file you want. So I'll just go into my D drive, my I2M. And I2M is the name of the add-on, which means image to mesh. And I'm going to grab the futuristic city and we'll go ahead and dump that on there. And as you can see, it's come through and we now have the city as a displacement, even in the EV map. And so, excuse me, the EV engine. So if you play around with displacement here, all fine and good, but try to keep it around something like 0 0.1, 0 0.15 before you jump over to cycles. So if you jump over into cycles now, uh, you'll be able to see how this looks. Okay, doesn't look great, but we'll come over here to the uh, modifier panel. And if you click add sub D, what's going to do is it's going to automatically throw in a subdivision, which is going to make this look about 10 times better. Now, of course, the more you subdivide this mesh, the better overall it's going to look. So if I did subdivide this one more time, which is just a little bit risky, even on a 3060 NVIDIA, then the detail goes up considerably. And of course, I added an exposure here. And the reason I did that is so you can check lighting because this is going to be really easy. You just throw a uh, point light in and I'll just kind of bring it above the mesh a little bit. And I want to change the power up, give it a little bit of like a sun glow color, something like that. And if I really want to make this look nice, I could jump over it and make this um, EV engine and turn on Bloom. And Bloom will help make that look a lot better. And you can drop down the Bloom settings and kind of play around with the threshold just a little bit if you wanted to. You can play around with the color factor and a couple other things. Definitely mess around with the radius and kind of bring that glow out just a little bit more. And then grabbing that light, you can see how it's actually going to reflect over that. It's gonna look a lot better uh, to me for that effect the shadows coming across in cycles it's just going to make a lot more sense and so now we can grab this and we can bring this up to the 0.15 area which is pretty safe it's pretty much a safe zone and let me change this to something like 50 so i don't run out of gpu memory that's always a pain then you can increase the levels incrementally as you see fit but just understand the extrusion or you know displacement, if you will, isn't going to look too good from the side if you have it out too far. So maybe 0.12, something like that. So it catches the shadows. Looks pretty good. All right, so that's nice. And then I could come in here if I wanted to go back and I could grab my Master Chief and it's going to automatically load him in. And that's really cool because now you could come over here and add some really neat lighting 
possibly come over here, add some volume, put a volume scatter in. It's going to kill everything, but it's okay. Bring everything to 0.1, something like that. And then incrementally bring that up. Maybe hold the shift key down and just bring that up a touch. Or bring it down to kind of see where you want it. Maybe 0 0.05, 0 0.001. We're just going to go for it. Okay, there we go. It looks a lot better. And as you can see, that's pretty neat. And if you bring the scale up, you will get a different shadow effect. It'll be a little bit more intense, perhaps 0.12. I think I'm going to stick with that. It actually looks pretty good. Now, there's a bunch of things you can do to enhance this. You can actually come in here and add in a bump. And we can tie the bump directly into the normals. And give that a second to update the mesh. And then we can tie in a noise texture and a ramp, color ramp. I didn't want the color ramp yet. Jumped right in there. So Shift A, S, type in noise grab a noise texture. Now this noise texture could go directly uh, with the color into the base. And when that happens, you'll get this effect, just kind of like a rainbow effect. But if you want to have control over that, so you can make it like a mosaic, shift A S type in ramp, grab your color ramp, drop that in the middle. And now what you can do is you can either leave it black and white and you can shift how the, uh, it's kind of like a shift, if you will, of the actual texture itself from black to white. But if you bring this all the way out and then click the plus symbol, you'll now be able to add in a couple more colors. And so you can choose something from the color wheel, uh, maybe go into a nice green for one of the colors something like that and then we'll shift this one here and bring it into like an orange and give that a second to update and you'll see you've got some uh, different intensities kind of growing here what you want to do though is bring the scale on up to like 20 like something like 30 probably pretty good uh, you can do some distortion you can add some extra detail something like eight would be nice so it kind of ends up looking like that. And I'll go to the EV engine. I think we'll be able to see this a lot better. Of course, it may not look as good. And that's because we don't have the lighting on properly. There we go. That's why the exposure helps out a lot. That's why I added that on there. So you can just give it a really quick, subtle adjustment without having to go through all those extra settings. All right, I'm starting to like that a little bit. But I do want to bring this factor from the noise down here into the height. And we'll see how that ends up looking. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, what I was doing previously, though, is I was putting a ramp. So I'll shift A, S, and type in ramp again. And I want to put a ramp right here to kind of control this and mitigate between the bump and the noise texture. And so I should be able to dissolve that. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, so now that we're dissolving the um, the noise pattern, you could kind of bring that in, just add a little bit to it, make it look like a um, like a steel plate with Master Chief on it, you know? And you can click the invert button, which I think is super cool, and actually invert that bump map the other way, which kind of raises it up a touch. Either way, whatever you think looks best you can go with but i'm just going to give you those options and so now that actually looks pretty cool i like that i'll jump back over into cycles and i want to see what that actually looks like from an angle if you will and let's maybe bring this up a touch it's pretty cool that light is kind of washing out We'll fix that just a little bit. There we go. I never had the radius up. I need to diffuse that. Doesn't look good. There we go. So that's a little better. And you could say, drag this over here, kind of like I did in the beginning. And maybe bring this into a blue. Bring up the intensity just a little bit. Do whatever you want and make it like a metal plaque uh, kind of painting. But I just think it's pretty sweet. I'll have the add-on um, out soon. There's some more tweaking I've got to do to it first. 
I will tell you that it's working in 3.51. Uh, I tried it in 3.6 and it acted crazy. And I have not tried it in 3. Point, excuse me, in 4.0 just yet. But the add-on is all standard stuff that you should be able to find in Blender. So it's probably just a byproduct of having been in the experimental feature, which goes wonky really, really quick. Um, so there's a ton more you can actually do to this if you wanted to. I think one of those things to make it look really nice would be to come over here to the material output between the principal BSDF and the material output and see shift right. There we go. That's what I wanted. G and bring that up. Okay, so shift S. I'm going to put in a glossy BSDF. Kind of like maybe right about here. Bring that bad boy out. Shift A S and I want to put in a mix shader node. The mix shader node can go into the surface actually since I kind of did that that way. No big deal. Cut that, bring that thing out of there. So the BSDF can go into the top slot and then the glossy BSDF can go into the bottom. And when that updates, that's going to actually look really nice. You can make some more modifications if you want to the um, glossy BSDF. I suppose you could even tie in the noise texture if you wanted to and have some fun. I don't think you can be too wrong with any which way you do this. And then the noise texture is now controlling a number of different things. You can throw in a little bit of distortion if you want to and see how that looks when it updates. I'll jump back over to EV Engine just for a moment. There we go. And so I hope this kind of gives you an idea of how quickly not only you can put this stuff together, but all of the work you're actually taking out of it by having an add-on do things. If you haven't used add-ons, it's time to upgrade. Um, so yeah, you can change the scale on the EV engine to kind of make it a little bit more dense or just have it extremely subtle. Whatever you want to do, fade it in. And that's about it, guys. Appreciate you watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget, smash that subscribe, smash that like button. And I'll have the add-on out as soon as possible. But there's a little bit more I got to do to it. See you guys in the next one.